Friends, I invite you to stand as we begin our worship this morning. Blessed be God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, whose forgiveness is sure and whose steadfast love endures forever. Amen. Together, let us honestly and humbly confess that we have not lived as God desires. Loving and forgiving God, we confess that we are held captive by sin. In spite of our best efforts, we have gone astray. We have not welcomed the stranger. We have not loved our neighbor. We have not been Christ to one another. Restore us, O God. Wake us up and turn us from our sin. Renew us each day in the light of Christ. Amen. People of God, hear this good news. By God's endless grace, your sins are forgiven and you are free. Free from all that holds you back and free to live in the peaceable realm of God. May you be strengthened in God's love, comforted by Christ's peace, and accompanied by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. During the Advent season, we watch and wait for Christ's coming, and so we gather at this evergreen wreath to light candles of hope, peace, joy, and love, remembering the promises of God with prayer. Friends, today is the third Sunday in Advent. It is the Sunday of joy. We light our third candle today as a remembrance that the coming of the Messiah, Jesus, is cause for rejoicing. We rejoice because the joy of the Advent of Jesus is not just something that we will experience in the someday, but is here and now today. Come, Emmanuel, come. Hear God's promise of joy in Isaiah. The wilderness and the dry land shall be a desert, shall be glad. The desert shall rejoice and blossom. Like the crocus, it shall blossom abundantly and rejoice with joy and singing. The glory of Lebanon shall be given to it, the majesty of Carmel and Sharon. They shall see the glory of the Lord, the majesty of our God. Strengthen the weak hands and make firm the feeble knees. Say to those who are of a fearful heart, be strong, do not fear. Here is your God. He will come with vengeance, with terrible recompense. He will come and save you. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened and the ears of the deaf unstopped. Then the lame shall leap like a deer, and the tongue of the speechless sing for joy. The waters shall break forth in the wilderness and streams in the desert. The burning sand shall become a pool, and the thirsty ground springs of water. The haunt of jackals shall become a swamp. The grass shall become reeds and rushes. A highway shall be there, and it shall be called the holy way. The unclean shall not travel on it, but it shall be for God's people. No traveler, not even fools, shall go astray. No lion shall be there, nor shall any ravenous beast come up from it. They shall not be found there, but the redeemed shall walk there, and the ransomed of the Lord shall return and come to Zion with singing. Everlasting joy shall be upon their heads. They shall obtain joy and gladness, and sorrow and sighing shall flee away. Let us pray. O Lord, our Redeemer, You lead us from languishing in sorrow's shadows into laughter's joy over your abundant restoration. Thank you that you are coming for us to lead us home along our way. Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. you. Let us pray. Stir up the wills of your faithful people, Lord God, and open our ears to the words of your prophets, that anointed by your Spirit, we may testify to your light. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, 
one God, now and forever. Amen. Good morning, St. Philip's. Our Old Testament lesson today is taken from the book of Isaiah in the 61st chapter. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring good news to the oppressed, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and release to the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to provide for those who mourn in Zion, to give them a garland instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the mantle of praise instead of a faint spirit. They will be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord to display his glory. They shall build up the ancient ruins they shall rise up the former devastations. They shall repair the ruined cities, the devastations of many generations. For I, the Lord, love justice. I hate robbery and wrongdoing. I will faithfully give them their recompense, and I will make an everlasting covenant with them. Their descendants shall be known among the nations and their offspring among the peoples. All who see them shall acknowledge that they are a people whom the Lord has blessed. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My whole being shall exult in my God. For he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness. As a bridegroom decks himself with the garland, and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. For as the earth brings forth its shoots, and as a garden causes what is sown in it to spring up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring up before all nations. The words of the Lord. Be to God. Our responsorial psalm today is taken from the 126th chapter. When the Lord restored the fortunes of Zion, we were like those who dream. The Lord has done great things for us, and we rejoiced. May those who sow in tears reap with shouts of joy. Our New Testament lesson today is taken from Paul's first letter to the Thessalonians, fifth chapter. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Jesus Christ for you. Do not quench the spirit, do not despise the words of prophets, but test everything, hold fast to what is good, Abstain from every form of evil. May the God of peace himself sanctify you entirely, and may your spirit and soul and body be kept sound and blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls you is faithful, and he will do this. The word of the Lord.
is a reading from the Holy Gospel according to John, the first chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but came to testify to the light. And this is the testimony given by John when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who are you? He confessed and did not deny it, but confessed, I am not the Messiah. And they asked him, What then? Are you Elijah? He said to them, I am not. Are you the prophet? He answered, No. Then they said to him, Who are you? Let us have an answer for those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? He said, I am the voice of one crying out in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord, as the prophet Isaiah said. Now they had been sent from the Pharisees. They asked him, Why then are you baptizing if you are neither the Messiah nor Elijah nor the prophet? And John answered them, I baptize with water. Among you stands whom, one whom you do not know, the one who is coming after me. And I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandal. And this took place in Bethany across the Jordan where John was baptizing. And this is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Well, friends, grace and peace to you and to me from God, our Heavenly Father, and our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, in my family, I'm surrounded by a lot of thoughtful gift givers. Now, it's often the case that at birthdays or Christmas, whoever's opening their present will find that they're unwrapping something they absolutely need. Or more accurately, the thing that you mentioned offhand about nine months ago that you could really use or you'd really appreciate. And most of the time, these gifts are fun. But every once in a while, you get one that causes you to do a bit of a double take. And last year, I got one of those types of gifts from my mom. It's this little stand-up picture frame that I keep inside my desk drawer. And I'll pull it out from time to time when I really need a helpful word. Because inside that picture frame is a message. And that message, without fail, cuts me to the quick every time I look at it. It says, excuse me while I overthink this. Because you see, I am one of those people who really overthinks things. I sit for way longer than I should with text messages, emails, sermons even, so that I can get them perfect. I'll go over things two or three times before I send them, thinking about how the person on the other end is going to receive it and what their reaction is going to be. But whenever I pull out that picture, it pulls me out of that wheel-spinning strive for perfection, and it reminds me that all I have to do is what I'm called to do. My friends, in our gospel lesson this morning, we're invited for the third time this week, if you've watched any of our daily devotions, to steep, steep ourselves inside the introduction of the gospel of John. And John starts his gospel in a very peculiar fashion. While other gospel writers begin with the birth narrative of Jesus or others jump right into Jesus' public ministry, John does something altogether different. John doesn't even begin his gospel with Jesus at all, but rather the one who comes to set the stage for Jesus. He begins with John the Baptist. And here in these verses, we find John doing exactly that. He's retreated out into the wilderness. He's calling people to himself to hear about the one who is to come. He's calling people to repentance, calling them to be baptized. Now, John is doing some very peculiar things in a very peculiar place, and the religious community in Jerusalem, they want some answers. They want to see by what authority John is doing these things and hopefully gain enough proof to go back to the temple in Jerusalem and say that they have found the long-awaited Messiah that the Jewish people have been promised. And unfortunately for those sent to interrogate John, they're disheartened. John is not the Messiah. John even goes so far as to confess 
confess not once but twice that he is not the Messiah. Even further, John shockingly states that he's not some other biblical character entering back into the biblical story. No, I'm not Elijah or Moses or anyone that you've ever heard of before or been told to expect. But yet, in spite of John's emphatic defense of who he's not, the question still remains, who are you then, John? And friends, I think John is so insistent about who he's not in this passage purposefully. John's confession that he's not the Messiah is something as rare as it is real. If we go through both Old and New Testament verses, power and status is often sought, usually with disastrous consequences for the people who seek it and for the people of Israel. But John the Baptist has zero interest in making this encounter about himself. He's not out in the wilderness to garner attention or shock value for his own theological beliefs and opinions. He's out there to bear witness. He's out there proclaiming, confessing, baptizing, because he knows exactly who he is and who he's not. He's just exactly who God called him to be. A voice crying out in the wilderness. Someone who's destined to prepare a way for another. A person called to point others towards Jesus. And that's enough. Friends, how dramatically different is John's self-actualization than our own? So much of our current culture seems bent on diminishing that nagging concern that we're not enough on our own. Societally, we're invited to prove that we're more than we actually are. We spend countless hours on airbrushing our image across all the different platforms that we participate in to let others see that we're living our best lives. We spend time creating, perfecting, and presenting whatever self we think will make people look more favorably on our work, on our lives, and on our beliefs tirelessly working to cover up those parts of ourselves that we think are rough or unsightly or uncouth for fear that people will think that we're frauds or failures, maybe even fools. It can be exhausting. No, it is exhausting. It's exhausting trying to monitor who we think we need to be And then John comes along with his flat denial of doing this very same thing, modeling for us, reminding us that we are enough, just as we are. So church, what are those spaces in your life that you fear others might see? What parts of yourselves are you desperately trying to cover up or divert others from seeing? Do you think that people won't like you or love you if you let down your guard and be authentically you? Do you think God might do that same thing too? The priests and the Levites went to John and asked him, who are you, and what do you say about yourself? I have to imagine that the people who heard John's answer to these questions were enormously disappointed. Disappointed that John wasn't the Messiah, that he wasn't Elijah or Moses or somebody big and important sent by God. He was just a man trying to do what God called him to do. I have to imagine that John was totally at peace with that fact, too. He'd have to be to sacrifice all that the priests and Levites were willing to heap upon him should he have just said yes. To boldly declare, I am not, when rewards of affirmation, attention, and acceptance were laid right there at his feet. Friends, amidst John's sacrifice lies an invitation. And it's an invitation that quickly turns towards promise. 
So friends, in this season of Advent, we hold firm to the promise that God will send his Son into the world to make all things new, including us. But the challenge before us is that in this promise of transformation to remember that God's will is being done, not our own. That while God does promise to make us new, God promises to make us more of who God intended us to be, not who we wish we were or who we think people will like or accept more transforming us and tearing down all those things that we clothe ourselves with to make us feel more worthy of what God has promised and God has already given. Church, you are enough. Enough for anyone else in this life, and especially for God. God accepts you as you are and has incredible work for you to do. Work that doesn't require you to be anyone other than whom God intended. Friends, we are called to wait for the Lord this Advent season. But while we wait, may we revel in God's acceptance of us. May we revel in his immeasurable love for us. May we revel in his continued calling to us, just as we are. Amen. Friends, let's stand and sing our hymn of the day.
called together here today at St. Philip's. United, we give special thanks today for the gift of hope, of anticipation, friendship in our collective health, the bounty of our earth, and our desire to do our very best work in your name. Let us pray. Thankful for the gifts of the Holy Spirit, we pray for the church, the world, and all of God's creation. God of healing, we are thankful for new vaccines developed in record time by our scientists. And we are grateful that the vaccine can be brought to market so incredibly fast, an amazing achievement on a global scale. Few of us can understand what it takes to accomplish something like this, but through collective knowledge, innovation, sheer will, and relentless determination, we have harnessed those gifts from you, Lord, to begin bringing an end to the human suffering that have touched so many in our community and around the world in so many ways. We are most grateful. Lord, in your mercy. God of serenity, in our world filled with uncertainty, calm our minds and our spirits. We imagine you looking down at the earth from above, all-knowing, very much aware of our recent struggles. They are bigger than any of us. You know it, you feel it, you see it. To us, it can feel as if nothing will ever be the same. The world has fallen off the tracks with no way to know how to fix it. It feels overwhelming. We look to you, knowing your love for all of us, putting all this in a perspective only you understand. We trust in you, Lord. You continue to watch over us. It will be okay. Help us keep our faith strong. Lord, in your mercy. God of the universe, we marvel at the coming of the great conjunction. When Jupiter and Saturn will appear together in the southwest evening sky over the next week, we will be able to witness a celestial event not witnessed like this since the Middle Ages. As these two giant planets converge on the night of the winter solstice, appearing almost as a single bright star in the night, we will be thinking of the birth of your Son and our Savior, Jesus. Lord, in your mercy. God of hope, let us all take time to witness this rare nighttime event. May it serve as a reminder to us all that you are here with us now and always. During this Advent season, May we all feel at peace, knowing that the gifts of hope and anticipation will lead to the coming celebration of Jesus' birth. He changed the world forever. Lord, in your mercy. God of compassion, remind us often, Lord, especially during the season, in the importance of small expressions of love, a thank you, a smile or caring expression that shines through our mass for someone we may not know. Taking time to listen and really listen. It can seem harder to make those kinds of connections these days. We're constantly reminded to wear our mask and keep our distance from others. Yes, we are fearful, Lord. We avoid giving someone a much needed hug or a reassuring hand on their shoulder. Help us find other ways to express our caring and love for one another. Lord, in your mercy. God of healing, help those in need of the strength and motivation to do their part in maintaining their health of mental and physical, especially now when more families are forced into separation from loved ones. Give them strength in the knowing that they are never alone. We pray for those in our families and congregation who live with depression anxiety, chronic pain, addiction, and other invisible illnesses. We pray especially for Ron Henry, Russ Hokanson, Charlie Young, Danny Mason, Judy Parsons, Sherry Thompson, Dana Hauser, John and Barb Williams, Dave Frampton, Ruth Bowles, Kelly Croft, Joe and Lynn Pauser, Lois Hardy, Marge Davis, 
Nelson and Diane Murray, Tr Trudy Gilganest, John Newcomer Sr., Del Lenker, Colby Sirkin family, Lenore Hoffman, Carol Ruckel, Kevin Meinhalt, Chris and Barb Hewlett, Hilda Crothers, Lamont and Sharon Smith, Stephen Ben Coaster and Ben Scoder and family, Richard Pierce, Carol Goodman, Bill Cox, and Kathy Long. Everyone is now invited to speak out loud or quietly to yourself for loved ones and others in our lives. Bring healing and hope to your people and strength and our gratitude for our caregivers and families. Lord, in your mercy. And God of wisdom, we pray for our teachers and especially our youth, the leaders of our future. Adjusting to remote learning has proven challenging and not very effective for many. We are learning to adjust. It is not easy and it has come at a cost. Technology plays a big role for which we are grateful. We have not mastered the switch. Students enter the final stretch of 2020 with the prospect of more remote classes in the new year. You understand that we are not really wired for this kind of sudden change. We pray that this experience will somehow help transform us and our schools in a way that will have a good outcome. We turn to you, God. Everything will be all right. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Draw near to us, O God, and receive our prayers for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. You. Share a sign of God's peace, either a peace sign or an elbow bump or whatever folks are comfortable with. Friends, good morning. Welcome to St. Philip's Lutheran Church, where our mission is to make disciples, praise God, and serve the community. I'm sorry. S Stephen actually has a Ben Coaster. <laughs> That's just great. Well done. Uh, great to see everyone today. Uh, great to have you worshiping with us or joining us online. A uh, bunch of things we want to lift up. Uh, you want to start? Yeah, going? I'll go. I gotta, you I you compose yourself, I'll go. So uh, on this Tuesday from 6.30 to 8, uh, our pub theology is going to be gathering again. Uh, for those of you who haven't joined us, uh, that is usually a time where we are at uh, Two Stones Pub in Lantana Square where we gather together for food and drink and conversation. We talk about things like current events, uh, issues in theology and faith, the Bible, but uh, with social distancing in place, we're going to be meeting over Zoom. Uh, so check your inbox for a Zoom link to come out tomorrow morning. Uh, we will be talking about how to speak or how not to speak about God. Uh, as always, all are welcome to these gatherings. Uh, the more, the merrier, actually. So if you're interested, we'd love to have you as a part. Uh, a couple other things, uh, Christmas gifts for Hilltop Lutheran Neighborhood Center. You guys absolutely crushed that list in a short amount of time. Uh, so now what is left is to have those gifts brought in by December 20th. Uh, there is an overflowing space in the narthex where we've asked those gifts to be deposited. So December 20th, we need those gifts wrapped tagged and brought into the narthex for them to go up to Hilltop Lutheran Neighborhood Center. But uh, you guys did an amazing job in this. You made such short work of that list. I'm just continually surprised and overwhelmed by this congregation's generosity. Uh, the last thing I have this morning is looking forward. Uh, starting on January 10th, we are going to be starting our large group Bible study programming. Uh, we are going to be doing this as a hybrid model for those who are back and in-person worshiping. Uh, if you want to attend, you can attend socially distant in the social hall. For those who are at home and want to participate from afar, we will be live streaming this. It is a, a video series called uh, What Does the... 
based, video series based on the small catechism, uh, which we are entitling, What Does the Small Catechism Have to Say in a Time of COVID-19? So from 9.15 to 10.15 in the social hall or online, uh, you can participate in this video study with us. Yeah, and all the time, every last, well, the last several years, we've done a video series, a large group video series in the winter months, uh, and given small grapes, uh, small grapes, small groups, a little bit of a pause. Do you have small grapes? No, okay. Uh, given small groups, a little bit of a pause. Um, and so that's, that, that's what we're kind of doing this time as well, but we're doing a hybrid model for it. So yeah, looking so forward Beaver to it. will be very exciting. Be very I think you <laughs> broke them. <laughs> we really did. Stephen mentioned Christmas. Uh, Christmas is coming. That means a couple of things. Um, the first thing is poinsettias. If you are going to dedicate a poinsettia for Christmas Eve, uh, that is due at this worship service to be deposited into the um, offering plate. I guess you could run home real quick and do it online as well using the link. But they get ordered first thing in the morning, so uh, this is kind of the drop-dead uh, time for that. The other thing is that worship uh, for Christmas Eve, the link has been out now for a couple of weeks. Uh, the 1030 service is full, um, but there, is, there are 15 slots left for 630 and six slots left for 830. So I think that's probably going to be the schedule. That's what it kind of looks like. So um, if you are interested in coming, you have your choice of those services to come to. You have to sign up. Don't, please don't put us in a position where you're showing up because you didn't sign up, and it's like, what do I do now? You know what I mean? So please sign up. Also, if your plans change, totally fine. Change your sign up. And whether to sign up or to change your sign up or delete your name or whatever, if you don't know how, Call me and John. We'll help you uh, either register for that or uh, help you change that one way or another. You compose now? No. No, but go ahead anyway. <laughs> I never compose. So we're delighted to announce that the uh, Cantata CDs are here. So if you'll see us... If you'll see Lauren and me, we'll be outside in the narthex um, after the postlude. If you'll let me play the postlude and then meet us out there, that would be great. Wonderful. And with that, we're going to get back to worship. Normally, we'd be receiving our gifts and offerings, the offering plates right down there instead of passing it around. Uh, also, you just continue to drop in there or continue to mail them in or electronically or whatever works for you. Why don't we stand and pray? Let us pray together. Gracious God, you have created all that is, and you provide for us in every season. Bless all that we offer, that through these gifts, the world would receive your blessing. In the name of Jesus, Emmanuel, we pray. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right and salutary that we should at all times and in all places offer thanks and praise to you, O Lord, Holy Father, almighty and ever-living God. You comforted your people with the promise of the Redeemer, through whom you will also make all things new in the day when he comes again to judge the world in righteousness. And so with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy are you and blessed is Jesus Christ, your Son, for he is Emmanuel, God with us. Fulfilling the expectations of the prophets, he healed the blind and the lame, cleansed the lepers, opened the ears of the deaf, raised the dead, and brought good news to the poor. Through his life, death, and resurrection, you manifest your new covenant with humankind. 
And through the church of his disciples, you give testimony to the power of your salvation for the world. For in the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And then again, after supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, in remembrance of all your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we give ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for the world as we declare together, Christ has died, Christ has risen, Christ will come again. Send your Holy Spirit upon us, gathered here out of love for you and on these gifts of bread and wine. Let the bread we break be a true fellowship in the body of Christ. Let the cup we share be a true participation in the new covenant, in his blood. By your spirit, empower us to be Christ in the world, serving in his name until the earth shall be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. Through your son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all glory and honor is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Friends, joined together by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory. Amen. Even as we watch and wait, Christ is here. Come, eat and drink. Thanks be to God. All know how uh, communion is distributed to get today together, so please come. All are welcome.
Let us pray. Gracious and abundant God, you have done great things for us, and we rejoice. In this bread and cup, you give us life forever. In your boundless mercy, strengthen us and open our hearts to the world's needs. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. And now, friends, may God, the creator of the stars, bless your Advent waiting. May the long-expected Savior, Jesus, fill you with love. And may the unexpected Holy Spirit guide your journey now and forever. Amen. Now go in peace, prepare the way of the Lord.